We're at the College of Veterinary Medicine, Mississippi State University today to learn about a hereditary disease in horses. This genetic defect affects the skin of horses and causes that skin to be easily traumatized or damaged. With us here today is Dr. Ann Rashmir, a recognized expert and researcher on this condition. Dr. Ann Rashmir heads up the team exploring what's commonly known as HERDA, or Hereditary Equine Regional Dermal Asthenia. I think the first written um, documentation occurred in the mid-70s, actually. And it was just a handful of horses at that time. As it turns out, you know, the carriers in the population just breed more and more carriers. And so it isn't until recently we've got enough carriers in the population that we're actually seeing the incidence of the disease rise to the point where it's fairly common now. Also known as hyperelastos cutis, or HC, this condition is passed from a sire and dam whose bad genes meet in an affected horse. Not all horses that have the disease are affected. The disease is actually carried by individuals that carry one copy of the bad gene. And so, for example, the stallion will have one good copy and one bad copy, and the mare will have a good copy of the gene and a bad copy of the gene. And so, they look totally normal. It takes two copies of the bad gene to look affected, to have bad skin. And so what happens is the stallion actually will throw his good gene and the mare will throw her good gene, and that's a normal individual. If the stallion throws his bad gene and the mare throws her good gene, that's a carrier, and that can pass that trait along as well. If the stallion throws his good gene and she throws her bad gene, that's another carrier. And so carriers occur 50% of the time. If the stallion throws his bad gene and the mare throws her bad gene, you get an affected individual, and that occurs 25% of the time. The result is a condition in which the layers of skin separate, causing scars and many times pain and irritation for the horse. The outer part of the skin is called the epidermis. Okay, the center part is called the dermis and the bottom is the hypodermis or subcutis. And these horses generally have a split or a defect in the center of that dermis. So basically right in the middle of the skin. In horses that have severe lesions is two layers of skin like this and they actually do this. So the upper layer actually lifts off, and we'll have a good look at that when we see some horses that have the disease. You can actually pull up on that upper layer of skin. I think you can tell that the skin right here over his master muscles, over his cheeks, very, very stretchy. He's actually also got skin right here. Okay, like it's not well connected to the horse. Then the other thing about these horses, a lot of them have, and I don't know a better way to say it other than it feels like their mane's not attached to the horse. Um, you can really lift up on these manes, and it's one of the things I'd like you to do on some of the less affected horses and see if you can't get a feel um, for what I'm talking about. And it's one of the signs that we see sometimes very early. Anyway, I think you can see how just stretchy that mane is. He's got obviously the big scars everywhere on him, um, the wrinkles. When the skin does heal, it heals with disfiguring scars. And you know, a normal horse, if they had wrinkles like this in their skin, over time it would just flatten out and look pretty again. The hair would regrow and, and realign. And I think you can see he actually goes from the tip of his nose pretty much all the way to his tail. He's got lesions actually all the way back here. He's not bad under his belly. He might be a little bit loose, um, but again, not bad. Normally horses get traumatized more over their top line. And actually, um, we've talked about a solar component where they actually had UV radiation, um, had a negative effect on their collagen, just like it affects us. We know if we stay out in the sun a lot, we wrinkle more, um, we have more pigmentation changes and all. These guys particularly susceptible to changes from the sun. And so their belly doesn't get a whole lot of sun. So, the top line, we see more effect, but again, if they do get traumatized underneath their belly, they'll have lesions there as well. One thing to remember is that this disease can be very subtle. So as always, if you suspect any type of problem with your horse, contact your equine veterinarian. I'm Dr. Kenton Morgan, and remember, always keep your horse's health first.